This episode has been brought to you by FlowState, the unlimited web flow development service. Find out more at flowstate.dev. Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. Today, I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to do a blitz tour of GSAP to get you up and running and understanding the basics of GSAP so that you can fend for yourself, right? With this blitz tour, if you want me to do any more GSAP tutorials, do let me know. I love GSAP. I've built games with GSAP. I've built fancy websites with GSAP. There's basically not a website that I've built that doesn't use GSAP. So I'm well versed in the tool, so you can ask me any questions that you like. So without wasting any more time, these are actually glasses. I've got my uh, actual glasses in for repair at the moment. So here we go, let's dive in. So here we have um, VS Code set up with my Webflow. If we don't know anything about that, I've got another episode, I'll link it above. But let's get GSAP installed. And what they have on their website is actually a page dedicated specifically to Webflow. But ultimately, you're going to be installing the CDM version in the body section of your page if you're only using it on a specific page. If you're using it throughout the site, then of course, move it into the site settings area of the body, but they're getting you to put it in the page here. Um, and then this is kind of how you do any um, libraries or anything like that, but we'll get into that in just a second. However, if you've used this solution, then I could just install GSAP like this and import it into my site like this from GSAP. And then I have access to GSAP all through, all nice and bundled together in my website. So if we console log that, you can see that GSAP is now loading. Let's have a play. So let's use uh, Copilot to write some code here and we'll go through a bit by bit. This is amazing. So. First of all, you need access to the GSAP library, and this is exactly what you will do. Whether you've used CDN or whether you've used the import method like I have, you're going to use GSAP library. Then you've got a bunch of methods that you can do with GSAP. You've got to, you've got from, you've just got from to. There's a whole bunch of them, but in this instance, we're using to. And as you can imagine, if we go to the documentation here, um, if we go to docs, GSAP, and then we go to the to, here it is. Most common type of animation is moving it to the values that you've defined inside of the object here. And we'll break that out just to make it a bit easier. And this is great for reactionary content. So if you click a button and then you want to move a menu out, right, to that sort of situation. In the context of Webflow, and, and I kind of disagree here that it's the most common because I find I'm using from as a method, okay? So this is basically saying from the position, the style, everything that I've defined inside of Webflow, what does it animate from, okay? And this is a more common thing. Let's just break these out so we can go through them. What I'm saying here, and this is a bit wild, I'm saying to get to the position that I've designed inside of Webflow, over the course of two seconds, I want to move it from an X of 100, from a Y of 100, so that's probably down the bottom uh, left here, a rotation of 360 degrees, so we're going to move it, we're going to spin it around, and we're going to scale it from a 0 0.5, so it's half the size it is now, and then bounce it. This is just going to look bonkers, right? And the first item here, so I should have said that first, is the element that you want to move okay and you can of course install um set a variable here and then replace that but this could also be a list of elements as well we'll get into that in just a second i know that this is not boxed i think it's called heading so let's just inspect that let's take the element it's a class of heading of course this could be an id this could be a data attribute it could be anything you want Ultimately, what, what element do you want to animate? If we refresh this now, look at that. That was absolutely beautiful. Let's move on to some more advanced stuff. You could also do from to and override completely the settings that you have defined inside of Webflow. But again, I'll leave those to your discretion on which method you want to use. You can also set up a timeline. So let's just do a little timeline here. We've got two paragraphs 
or two sections here. We've got hero tagline. Here we go. So let's take our tagline equals document dot query selector and make sure that's that. So we've got two elements here. Let's say we want to animate one and then animate that other. Okay. And so for this, we're going to want to set up a timeline. So let's go const timeline uh, gsap dot timeline this time. And we want to set up a bunch of defaults, right? And we're going to set the duration as one. This could be two, or you could completely omit this. And I would suggest going into the documents and having a look at timeline. So when you see it, defaults here, such as easings and things like that. So just have a look and see if you want to set any defaults. I often don't, to be honest. And we can just leave that or have an empty object there. Okay, so we've got our timeline. Now, instead of from GSAP, we're going to bind this to the timeline. And then the next item in the list is going to be our tagline. Let's just set this up. And then we're just going to put auto, uh, auto alpha. We're going to set it from zero. And there's going to be a special area here, which is very confusing. And I'm often diving into the documentation to remind myself of what this can be with this basically sets to say, where does this item come in in relation to the previous object? So as an example, this says from the beginning of the previous object. So it's, they're both going to come in and animate together. So let's just show that real quick. Cool. So you have them both kind of coming at the same time. If I remove this, then we'll have one and then the other. So that is a, a timeline, basically. What if you want to uh, affect multiple elements kind of in, in synchronizations? If we scroll down here, let's go to my YouTube things here. I want to kind of fade these in one by one. So let's take a selector that has multiple classes, or, or at least if we were to select all, then it will pick up a few of them. So let's do collection list wrapper and W call for. It's probably going to affect these as well because, again, I'm not using specific classes. But if we go const uh, list items equals. Now, there's an issue in some browsers where if you use uh, query selector all, that returns a list of node elements. It's not an array of elements. I think GSAP can handle this. But it's no coincidence that GSAP has its own utility function that can transform a list of node elements into an array. And the way we do that is gsap.utils.toArray. And we pass it a selector. And I believe this was w col4, w col4. And this will turn this into uh, an array. Now, just quickly now as a sidebar, this is loading on every single page, this JavaScript file. If this was to load on every page and it can't find these elements. Now you're gonna get a bunch of errors here. So this is pretty bad code. What I tend to do is go list items dot length. Just make sure you're checking to see if the element is on the page before running any kind of GSAP on it. So I'm gonna go GSAP dot from, because I'm gonna move them to the position that they're in right now that I've designed inside of Webflow. And you can just pass that, that array of elements here, right? And I'm just going to go auto alpha zero. So I'm going to get them to fade in. And I often like to go Y hundred. So they're going to fade up in there. Now there's going to be a few things wrong with this. So you can see that they all fade in together as, as expected. You've got the um, few ones there. But of course, if I was to refresh here and scroll down, you can see they've already faded in. Let's deal with the kind of all of them fading in all at once. As you can see, go pile up to the rescue. You've got a stagger element here. Now, 0 0.2 is a bit slow. So if we fade that in, a little bit slow. Um, maybe 0 0.5 would be better for this one. That looks probably a bit better to me. The next one is the fact that they've already faded in. Okay, so now we know how to stagger 
a list of elements so that they um, they all fade in uh, in sequence. We're now going to use a library called Scroll Trigger. Uh, I think this is a built-in library. If I do Scroll Trigger, you're going to first of all import it. Now, going back to here, going back to our installation and Webflow, they show you specifically how to import Scroll Trigger into your thing. You're going to want to then register that plugin. And the way we do that, gsat.register plugin and scroll trigger. This is no different if you're using the CDNs. You, you just won't have all this kind of stuff. You'd still do this. And this enables us to use scroll trigger. And there are two ways to use this. The first instance is just to directly supply a selector of the element that you want to be visible when this scrolls in. Okay, so let's do, let's just use collection list wrapper. You just simply put, provide the selector of what you want to be visible. So there we go, one. Oh, it looks like they've, uh, that's also animating. While that's fine, you can see how kind of quickly that came in. It wasn't too bad, but you can have more control by opening this up into an object and setting the trigger as that element there. And you can do a start point of, now this is, gets quite confusing. You know, you're thinking about the element and where it is in relation to the page scroll position. So. I want to do it when the bottom of this element, the collection uh, list wrapper, the bottom is at the bottom of the viewport. So basically here, and we can even set, you're going to make sure you um, turn this off when it comes to publishing, but this should give us some markers which enable us to see exactly what it is. So you've got the start and end there. You see how it's, oh, you've got the made in Webflow thing there, but you can just about, just about see it. And when that hits the bottom, boom, that's when it's going to fade in. Okay, so you get more control there. Another way to add interesting functionality is the scrub method. And what this is going to do, it's going to control the animation on the scrub of the window. So you can see there, is animating as I scrub through. You can also delay that by setting uh, a number, giving it a number. So in this case, number two, you can see that it's going to play. There's going to be a little bit of catch up. Maybe even do five. I don't know. Five is a crazy number. You can see I stop, and you've got that inertia effect going on. But oftentimes I'm doing true. Otherwise, it looks a bit weird. And I would say I want the animation to finish by here. So that is when the center of that element reaches the center of the page. So um, let's do that, center, center. It looks weird, but trust me. Now what this is gonna do, it's gonna finish when I get to that central bit. So there you go, that's kind of, kind of how you get things scroll triggering. Another thing you might want to look at is easing, and it gives you the code to, to do this. Now, I love Power 4 Out, especially if you're using From Animations. Power 4 Out is my kind of favorite, and you'll do that, obviously. Well, you've got an example here, so there we go. Uh, Power Out 4 is kind of what I want to do. But you can play around with different easings that enable you to, uh, yeah, just give a different feel. And the feel is so important. Easings can, and durations can make all the difference in your animations. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know, like I say, let me know in the comments below if you want more GSAP tutorials. There's so much you can do and we can get so much more creative with it. These are just the basics, like I say. Check me out on Twitter. My handle is at Fake Sam Gregory. We have a Webflow and Code community over on there. Like, subscribe, all the rest of it. And YouTube will do its recommendation thing in three, two, one.